All right, so you're looking at a, I think it's a 06 Toyota Prius. And what we have down here in front is a, uh, what they call a Cat Defender. Um, it's made by Auto Defender. I'm not, you know, this isn't, I'm not sponsored by them. I don't, I've never even heard of this until uh, recently. Um, this guy uh, had his Cat Converter stolen from him uh, right out broad daylight, right out in front of his work. Uh, a truck pulled up and blocked the car and then came into his work and another guy was talking to him, distracting him while they cut off his catalytic converter. If you have a small jack and one of those uh, uh, cordless uh, saws, you can cut one of these catalytic converters off probably less than two minutes. And here in St. Louis, I mean, the prices go up and down, but I sell my cats to... Uh, a certain population uh, after I after I install for customers or whatever and they the last two I got I got $700 for and I believe these Toyota Priuses the going price for them to sell them is about 1600 you you know used so uh, they are, are one that's bad so they're getting $1600 to for each car converter now I think if you brought one to them uh, like I said this is a certain group of people here in St. Louis this isn't a company or anything and uh, they're on Facebook in several places, and you can call them and they'll meet you somewhere or they'll come to your house, pick up the catalytic converter, give you the money and take off with it. And anyway, so I, I do that because I get the catalytic converters legitimately. I buy them, put them on for customers. If they get a P420 code or whatever, uh, you know, I replace catalytic converters at least probably four to six a year, and then I sell them to these guys and they give me good money for them. So I'm not complaining about that, but uh, if, you know, if, I heard these Toyota Priuses are high demand and they get cut off quite a bit. In St. Louis in general, they're cutting them off everything, uh, especially the Hondas and Toyotas, but they cut them off everything. They go into the commuter lots and they even go to shops at night and steal them. So no cattle converter is really safe in St. Louis. Uh, it's just, a, you know, the downside of living in a city like this where people don't want to work and we'll steal from everybody so you come out the next day and your car is super loud and you got a big bill ahead of you so anyway this car has already been stolen once he doesn't want to get it stolen again so we're gonna go ahead and put this on he bought this it's an aluminum plate that goes on uh, I think there's some factory bolts that go start out with and then you have uh, some security bolts and some actual pop rivets from what I've seen I kind of did a little research on it, it takes about a half hour 45 minutes to install probably depending on how well uh, you, you know if it's up on the lift, it'd probably be even easier. Uh, and it's there's something like this. Uh, yes, they can probably cut through it eventually, but it's supposed to make a lot of noise if you start cutting on it. It's aluminum, so it will make a lot of noise if you start cutting on it. And they're not going to have, they're probably not going to have the tools to uh, unbolt it or cut it off. Uh, I mean, if, if they're determined enough, they're still going to get it. But uh, on something like this, they're probably just going to leave it. And not draw that much attention to themselves if this is on there so this is uh i'm not sure how much this costs like i said i'm not sponsored by them i don't know anything about the company but uh anyway he got it and i'm gonna put it on for him so uh we'll go through the steps of putting this on i think it's pretty straightforward it comes with a small instruction seat and it says you need uh well you need a popper of a gun a drill and two drill bits either 5 30 seconds and 3 16 flathead screwdriver and a 516 impact driver so it's got uh three different ways it mounts on there security rivets and self-tapping screws plus the three i believe on the top are factory uh bolts that are under there that bolt to it so we're gonna get under there and uh start uh lining this thing up and see what it takes to put it on All right, the first thing we're going to do is take off this little plastic shield. It's held on by uh, three 10 millimeter nuts. And we're going to drop this out and then put the cap defender up there. And then we're going to get a small jack and hold it from the back and kind of center it. It should be pretty centered with these. Something's bolt sitting here. <laughs> anyway, uh, it should center itself pretty good with these studs. So we're going to take these out. It should be three 10 millimeters.
And then this plastic shield should come off. We're not going to need that anymore, so I'll just throw it in this car. And then, uh, slide this one up there. I may have to turn it off for a second here. Move my light. You don't want to put your jack stands on the frame because, uh, All right, so you can see I got it, uh, the bolts, the nuts started up here. I got a jack in the bag. It's not pushed real tight against this. I just got it so it's holding up. So you should be uh, straight. This does go on one certain way. This little uh, little half moon notch right here goes toward the driver's side. If you have it upside down, these bolts won't line up. So we're just going to tighten these three tens and then uh, start doing the security and the other stuff they got with it. this for sure I didn't double check it but he did say that this is supposed to be a pretty quiet plate it shouldn't make a lot of noise or any noise after it's installed um, but like I said I don't I didn't do any research on it really I just uh, kind of looked online and saw that people were putting them on there and this is the one he got so anyway uh, we got to put uh, eight what 16 more fasteners in it uh, I think this just depends on they have it they tell you in the instructions which is which so we'll go ahead and do one side together and then I'll do the other side and then we'll uh, that's about it I guess we'll see how it works out so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just do the driver's side so that's easier to get to for me and we'll go from there and see what we got to do next all right so that's what I get for not reading the instructions first it says you can optionally put this plate back on this factory plastic splash shield back on after you put the plate on. So I went ahead and took those nuts back out and go ahead and put this back on. It says it's optional, but you might as well just put it back on since that's uh, it's better than throwing away, I guess, even though it really doesn't do anything at this point. But uh, anyway, so I put that back on. So I'm gonna read the instructions next. I think we go to the back first and put the screws in on the back and go from there, but I'll find out for sure and then I'll pick it back up. Again. All right, the instructions that I want you to so, uh, install the self-tappers in the middle are on the, the very last screw in the corner. And it says to pull the plate downward a little bit to give us some uh, downward memory so it doesn't uh, bow up uh, over time. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and do this corner here. And you need a 5 16 driver and this should be a self tapping so we're just going to get this driver side back corner first and then we'll do the other side real quick all right now i'm going to go ahead and do the other corner and then uh we'll go through what they want done next but uh it does come with instructions. I'm just going to go through it real quick for you, though. So we'll go, I'm just going to go do the other side real quick so that it's up on both sides and even. And then uh, we'll pick it up from there. All right, you got four rows of holes, uh, two deep, um, on each side. And according to the instructions, they want, uh, what do they want, four three sixteenths holes drilled. And use the uh, holes in the plate as a pilot. Four of those, these four are going to be drilled, three sixteenths, and that's going to be for the pop rivets, and then the other, the other holes in the front, and then you got one in the back next to that uh, self tapper. Those are all security screws, and it says you can use either eleven sixty four or five thirty seconds on that. So I'm going to go ahead and drill my four four holes here for the pop rivets, and uh, go from there, and we'll pop rivet them in. So it's pretty self explanatory, like I said, but. We'll go through it anyway. So I'm going to drill those four holes and then we'll start pop ribbing. So I got the first one drilled. I'm just drilling the second one. Shouldn't take too long if you got a good drill bit. So 
I got two more to go, and then we'll pop rivet those in. If your pop rivet won't uh, go in there flush, just clean it out a little bit with your drill bit. Just so you make sure it's flush uh, before you put it in. You don't want to. So it's still not going all the way flush. Gonna clean it out a little bit. They should lay flush like that before you pop before you uh, pull the trigger. All right, so. Uh, all right, so I got the poppers installed. Now you only have uh, what two, uh, three holes, three more holes to go. You have uh, they want two securities right here in the front, and then one more security where that cell tapper's at. So uh, we'll switch to a five thirty seconds drill bit. We'll drill these holes out, and then we'll put the security ones in there. And then this side will be done, and then just do the same thing on the other side. All right, so here it is all installed, uh, both sides. Uh, pretty straightforward. I'm not a big fan of those security screws. Uh, pretty hard to get in, especially when you're trying to go into a frame with a stainless steel nut or a stainless steel screw. Uh, they they could have done something better with that. Maybe, uh, I don't know, even just regular self-tappers would have been better than those. Uh, I know it's, it might slow somebody down, but uh, they're so cheap and flimsy. Somebody could take a pair of vice grips and turn them right out, no problem. If they had the time and willpower or even like an electric chisel but anyway uh that's it so you might be able to bamboozle a couple thieves here and there with this and uh keep your cat and save yourself a bunch of money so just something to think about if you live in an area that has uh you know st louis where your people are stealing cats right and left uh you can't leave your car anywhere unattended like i said this guy was at work and they stole it right out on a busy street in front of his work Used a uh, truck to block the car, and then another guy came in and was asking him questions, and he had no clue uh, his cat was getting stolen. So that's it for this one. Uh, hopefully, you can uh, maybe thwart some people and keep your cat. Thanks for watching. As always, God bless.